If you weren't at the uh, life group on Thursday, you'll have missed uh, the pre-notice that Dan gave when he said that I'd be speaking this morning. He then said we needed to see a miracle. So I, I did wonder, did Dad mean he wants to see the raising of the dead? Or is it the miracle that I won't put you to sleep? Let's see. So we're continuing this morning our series on looking at the gifts of the Spirit. And if you have your Bible, would you turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 7 says, Now to each one, to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom, to another the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he gives them to each one just as he determines. And this morning we're going to look for a, a few moments at prophecy and distinguishing between spirits. Prophecy in the Greek simply means to speak forth. That's what a prophet is doing, speaking forth the word of God. But here's a wider definition. Prophecy is declaring the message of God to his church for the purpose of edification. Edification means uplifting. It's not a skill, aptitude or talent. It is the actual speaking forth of words given by the Spirit in a particular situation and ceases when the words given by the Spirit cease. This may be in poetic form or even a song. Prophecy is declaring the message of God to his church for the purpose of edification. And the key thing is it's all about revelation. It's about speaking forth the word given by the Holy Spirit. Now prophecy, you know, is not just about predicting the future. Prophecy is fundamental to the Bible. A third of it is prophecy. And in the past, God spoke through individuals revealing his mind and his thoughts. And you know when you read the Bible that sometimes those thoughts can be very strange and it can be hard to understand what God means. And that's all through the Old Testament. The final chapter of the Old Testament is a prophecy that says this, Surely the day is coming, it will burn like a furnace, all the arrogant and evildoer will be stubble. And at that day that is coming, they will be set on fire, says the Lord. Not a root or branch will be left to them. But for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in its wings. You will go out and leap like calves released from the stall. And that was Malachi talking about the day of the Lord, talking about the end of days. But they're words that can be difficult to understand. Now in the Old Testament, God commissioned prophets. You can read about the specific uh, words given to Jeremiah when God ordained him as a prophet. He said this, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. And in the Bible, we then have the prophecies that God has given together with the history 
and poetry and teaching. And this is the very word of God, which is a light to our path. Another one of the prophets, Joel, prophesied in the 9th century BC that there would be a day, and that day was 900 years later, when God's Spirit would be poured out on his people. Joel spoke the words that God gave him in chapter 2, verse 28 of Joel, and he says this, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Joel said, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. And we know, don't, don't we, that because of that pouring out, the Holy Spirit now lives inside us. We heard last week, we a reminder from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you. Let's pause at that for a moment. Don't you know that you're God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? We heard that prayer this morning, didn't we? Thanking God for all that he's done. What an amazing thing this is, though, that God's Spirit lives in you. That somehow, if we could open ourselves up, the Holy Spirit is living in us. And because of that, we see the gifts given that demonstrate the working of God in our lives. So let's look at prophecy and what we can read about it in uh, Corinthians, the passage that we've been studying in 1 Corinthians chapters 12 to 15. 1 Corinthians 14 says this, Follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. Desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God. Indeed, no one understands him, he utters mysteries with his spirit. But everyone who prophesies speaks to men for their strengthening, encouragement and comfort. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. I would like every one of you to speak in tongues, but I would rather have you prophesy. He who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues unless he interprets so that the church may be edified. Seven things about the gift of prophecy that Paul talks about here. The gift of prophecy is not the same as the prophecies we were looking at that we read about in the Old Testament. We don't deliver prophecy with the authority of scriptures. Prophecy here is about God speaking into individuals' lives. We can't surpass the Bible. God has revealed his full dealings with man in the Bible. That cannot be superseded. And we're told here that the prophecy that's delivered in the gift is about three things. Everyone who prophesies speaks to men for their strengthening, encouragement and comfort. So remember our definition of prophecy, it's about declaring a message or a revelation from God. So God says when we prophesy in the church, it should help people grow. So if a message we hear in the church doesn't strengthen, doesn't encourage, or doesn't comfort, it's probably not from the Holy Spirit. So how does it work? God speaks to an individual who receives a message which they speak forth. It could be that they have a picture, a thought, an image, 
a sentence from the Holy Spirit. It's not about the person's own interpretation or ideas. The person receiving the gift has to just deliver what they were given. They prophesy, they speak it forth but they should just speak forth the message given and no more. We also know that it's right to desire this gift. Paul tells us that compared to the other gifts, he wishes we got this one. Imagine what Paul is telling us there. He's saying that we should eagerly desire it if we can ensure that our motives are right for wanting it. But Paul makes it clear that he wants us all to have a revelation from God that we can share. He wants a church in Corinth there, and our church too, to be full of people that can hear from the Holy Spirit and speak those words forth. As I mentioned though, prophecy in the New Testament in our church does not have the absolute authority of Scripture. We can see an example of that in Acts chapter 21, verse 1 to 6. And you remember we studied a few months ago the journeys of Paul. And on one of his journeys, on the way back to Jerusalem, the Christians there who he was staying with stopped him and said, through the Spirit they urged Paul not to go on to Jerusalem. But when our time was up, we left and continued on our way. Paul received a prophecy urging him not to go on to Jerusalem. But Paul ignored it. He went on his way because he didn't accept that prophecy as being from God. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 29 says, The recipients of prophecy should weigh carefully what is said. The Greek word that's used means that we sift the good from the bad. So when we hear a word of prophecy in the church, we need to think about it. We used to need to use our mind and say, Lord, is that right? Does that apply? Paul says in 1 Thessalonians, do not put out the Spirit's fire. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Test everything. That's because sometimes, as I've said, the prophecy may not be a message from God. As Scrooge said, it could be a piece of cheese that's given the message. So perhaps when we deliver a prophecy, rather than saying, thus saith the Lord, it might be better to say, I think God may be saying this or that. When we meet together, prophetic messages must be delivered in an orderly manner. Paul tells us this. Two or three prophets should speak, and the others should weigh carefully what is said. And if a revelation comes to someone who is sitting down, the first speaker should stop. For you can all prophesy in turn, so that everyone may be instructed and encouraged. The spirits of prophets are subject to the control of prophets. For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. The spirits of prophets are subject to the control of prophets. And what Paul means is that when we give a prophecy, we're not being taken over by the spirit. We're not becoming automatons. We still have our own minds. We can still act in a good and decent way. And Paul says that's really important to ensure that we do things decently in the church. This one is for Dan. Messages can be short. <laughs> Acts chapter 21. You can read about Paul's journey back to Jerusalem when he was in Caesarea. We read this. After we'd been there a number of days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. Coming over to us, he took Paul's belt, tied his own hands and feet with it and said, the Holy Spirit says, in this way, the Jews of Jerusalem will bind the owner of this belt and will hand him over to the Gentiles. 
That was the prophecy. 26 words. The Holy Spirit says, in this way, the Jews of Jerusalem will bind the owner of this belt and will hand him over to the Gentiles. Agabus only spoke what he was given. He didn't elaborate, he didn't add to it, he just gave the word that he'd been given. Prophecy is a sign for unbelievers. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 24 and 25 says, if an unbeliever or someone who does not understand comes in while everybody is prophesying, he will be convinced by all that he is a sinner and will be judged by all, and the secrets of his heart will be laid bare. So he will fall down and worship, exclaiming, God is really among you. Prophecy is a sign for unbelievers. The Bible says that when prophecy is delivered in the church, when the unbeliever comes in, they will fall down and worship God, saying he's really among you. No wonder Paul said he wanted to see prophecy in the church and we want to be an evangelical church don't we where people can come through the door and fall down worshiping God saying God is really among you because they hear the words of prophecy because it's a sign that God is among us Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 of another gift the distinguishing between spirits or discernment. We have little detail in the Bible on this gift. It's only mentioned once in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10 that we read earlier. But that doesn't reflect the importance and the need for this gift in the church. Because this gift makes sure that we follow the Lord's direction and are kept from error and being led astray. You know, sometimes things which appear to be good and right aren't. The Bible tells us that Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. So the discerning of spirits enables someone through the direction of the Holy Spirit to recognise and distinguish between the influences of God, Satan, the world and the flesh in a given situation because the church needs to be able to tell good from bad and Jesus's voice from Satan's voice. Here's an example of it working. We can read about it again in the life of Paul in Acts chapter 16. You'll know the story. This is Paul in Philippi. Once we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so troubled that he turned around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. So Paul was being followed by a girl who was saying, these men are servants of the most high God who are telling you the way to be saved, which seems good. The word servant in the Greek talks about the girl having the spirit of a python and that's a reference to the temple of Apollos which was uh, protected by a python and it was believed that um, women could become clairvoyants through the python if they served in the temple and that's what was happening here this girl was a clairvoyant and Paul was disturbed because she was declaring these men are servants of the Most High God. It seems good, but it was bad. Because that might have suggested to the Greeks that Paul was a servant of the Greek gods, not of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see that through the Spirit, the Spirit tells him, this is not from me. 
This is from Satan. We read there about a public... Um, do you know when you forget a word? What's the word? This is a quiz. What's the word when you cast the devil out of somebody? What do we call it? Exorcism. Thank you. We read there a public exorcism that followed the discernment that Paul had from the Holy Spirit. Now, you may have had a situation where you've been uncomfortable in someone's presence and you don't quite know why. There's a gentleman that Tracy and I um, know, and um, if you've got a dog, you'll understand when you walk a dog, you become a member of a club because other people stop and talk to you when they wouldn't if you didn't have a dog. And this gentleman used to stop and talk to us. And when I'd be walking the dog on my own when Tracy wasn't there, I'd stop and chat to him. And we'd start to talk about things other than just passing the time of day. And I said to Tracy, there's something about him that really made me uncomfortable. Then the one day we had a conversation and we started then to talk about God and he explained to me that he was a practicing druid. And I think the Holy Spirit was telling me through discernment previously that that was what was going on in this man's life. So this gift is vital for the church because we need watchmen or lookouts. In the Old Testament, you can read how watchmen protected cities from attack. Discernment gives that to the church. So two gifts that we've looked at today. Prophecy. And the Bible urges us, us all to prophesy. Discernment is vital for the church to prevent us from error. My final three points. The gifts are for all. I purposely read that from Joel where it reminded us that the Spirit was poured out for sons and daughters. The Spirit has been poured out on men and women. The gifts are there for us all to use. But a reminder, when we use the gifts, don't get puffed up because God can use a donkey. Don't think that you have to prophesy in the same way as other people do. We're all unique because God wants it that way. God doesn't want a church full of people who are all the same. He wants people who are unique, which means we will all operate in the gifts in our own unique way. Don't think when you prophesy, you have to do it like somebody else does. You might want to write your prophecy down. You might want to sing it. You might want to whisper it to somebody else to speak it out for you. And finally, remember this. The prophets understood that we live physical lives in a spiritual world. One of my favourite stories in the Bible is the, uh, the story that's explained to us in 2 Kings chapter 6. And you'll remember there that Elisha was being pursued by the king of Aram. And the horses and the chariots of Aram were surrounding him. But Elijah wasn't concerned. And his servant said, O oh Lord, what are we going to do when he saw the horses and the chariots around him? And Elisha prayed that the servant's eyes could be opened so that the servant could see the horses and the chariots of the Lord that surrounded him. Because the prophets were operating and understood the spiritual realm in which we live. And that's the whole point of where we're at, isn't it? Of recognising that we live and should operate in a spiritual realm. Prophesying and having discernment. Thank you. So how do we respond to that? Let's just close our eyes for a moment bow our heads and just be silent and what I want to ask everybody to do we're going to do something a little bit practical right now we're going to respond in a practical way Peter's already told us and shown us that this gift of prophecy God wants us to all have that or Paul wanted us all to have that gift of prophecy to strengthen others to encourage others 
to comfort others. So I want you to bow your heads, close your eyes, and just ask God right now to place on your mind and on your heart someone. That may come to you over right now. It may come to you over the next few hours. It may come to you. We'll take this away, don't worry. But I want, God, I want you to ask God, place somebody on my heart that I can speak a word of encouragement, a word of strengthening, a word of comfort into their lives. And then this week, whether it be today, whether it be now, whether it be in a few days' time, I want you to continue praying for that person and continue asking God to give you that prophetic encouragement, that prophetic strengthening and comforting that you can share with them. Let's be a church that's known for encouraging those that need encouraging for bringing God's encouragement and strengthening into people's lives. Let me just pray for us. Father, I just pray right now, Holy Spirit, come. This is your gift, Lord, your gift of prophecy. And we ask that you come and you distribute that amongst us. Give to us words of encouragement, words of strengthening, words of comfort, words of prophecy, Lord that we may speak forth what you want to speak to people. So Holy Spirit, I pray, come and rest upon your people. Like it says, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, men and women, young and old. Let us go away from here today, transformed and changed. And Father, I pray, give people boldness to share that word that God has placed on them, even if it's just one word or 26 words. Lord, give them the boldness to share it, to go and speak to that person that you are placing on their hearts right now. Lord, I ask that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Okay, guys, we're going to leave it there for today. I want to.